I feel as like it's always a surprise going into a Vince Staples album because there's so much to dissect and there's so much to go through and Ramona Park Broke My Heart is no different. I feel as if when you go through, you're going to need multiple listens to dissect everything. So today, guys, we're going to be going through Ramona Park Broke My Heart by Vince Staples, one of the most anticipated albums of the year, especially for the hip-hop community, because you know what type of quality you're going to be getting. And guys, follow along with us. Let us know your ratings for each of our categories and everything else in the comments. And Lou, I want to ask you this about the artist performance, because this is where we're going to start off. Where do you think he strived? Because I feel as if this is kind of maybe an upgraded performance than what we had gotten, you know, with the self-titled then you could kind of see it throughout the whole track list now even though it's longer 100 percent. i love how smooth and relaxed the flows were i feel like he took a note out of the pages and the books of snoop dog nade dog ice cube and some of those west coast legends for how wavy and smooth those flows were man, that's to facts. be honest and apart from that i also love just how bluesy his performance was and you could say that maybe he doesn't change his tone all that much but to me that was intentional i felt like he's kind of reliving these harsh memories but those memories put him in a somber mood and then the, then the production maybe up, uplifts his energy. So I thought that was really cool, but... What did you think about that? Do you feel like he could have been a bit more dynamic with that? or I, I feel as if yes, but only because like it, it is 16 songs, but I understand what he was going for. Like I feel as if he could have, but I understand why he didn't because it does play into the overall track list. And I also love how he's trying to also dive into different melodic pockets here where, you know, I never really saw him do that. To the be hooks are catchier and, here. And, and the hooks are catchier. So example, on When Sparks Fly, like that is a fantastic performance where Vince is getting super emotional and, you know, he's getting you into the zone. So, was this something that you wanted from Vince before getting this album? Was maybe getting a bit more melodic and, you know, playing with his harmonies more throughout a track list? For sure, because, like, hooks like Magic or Lemonade have more of that, like, radio appeal. And you could tell that he's kind of making these catchier tunes, which was awesome. And apart from that, my main thing with the performance is just the way that he actually curated this album That's in the fact. sense of adding so much cinematic value through the interludes you got and also making Ramona Park, that neighborhood of his, feel like a character by making you kind of taste and feel what that neighborhood was like through the soundscape and through his lyrics and it just it added a tangibility to Ramona Park and for the me. imagery throughout the whole album is really nice too and I feel as if Vince does a really good job at displaying this environment yeah. throughout the whole track list and another thing is that I, I love that there's no filler throughout the album and that was something that I wanted for Ramona Park because you know Vince you know the original Vince Staples self-titled that came out in 2021 was super short super concise and then when I when I realized he was going for more of a longer concept with Ramona Park I was like okay you know what this is gonna sound good but I have to see where it goes with it and it's only 41 minutes you know 16 tracks and gets everything across perfectly and that's what i like about it so how did you like him on a longer track list now in comparison to what you have made gotten with other albums like let's say fm2 at this it point it was fire because he captivates you with like these songs that never really pass over that three minute mark a lot of them are like two minutes and 30 seconds so you're getting these new sounds track after track and it just makes for a really um coherent listen so Overall, I think Vince's performance was amazing, and I think that, like I said, maybe he could have changed up his, his tones a bit and been a bit more versatile in that sense, but I think it was all intentional for the theme of this album at the end of the day. And that's facts, and I also think that you're going to get standard Vince Staples flows within this album too, like the ones that you know we grew up listening to and the ones that we fell in love with, example, on Mama's Boy or Paper Cuts, like where he's absolutely ripping these verses. But let's get into the content matter, because this is interesting. I feel as if, when you look at it from a content level, this is much deeper, um, um, than what you had gotten in his previous projects and this is easily easily one of his most personal body you know bodies of work to date and i think what's cool about it is that i noticed three different um i would say mentalities um within his overall i would say um approach to this album I, you know you saw the romance throughout his writing um you saw the anxiety and paranoia and then after that you also saw the reflectiveness and you know the introspection so let's go through this track list and the content what was your favorite standout as far as a song let's say you know for the whole track um list? probably when sparks fly because what he does there is he treats ramona park like a character and more specifically he kind of um, treats Ramona Park as a gun, to be more specific, and he kind of uses this allegory where, um, you know, he's talking about being in the whip with his girl, but really, he's talking about being, you know, side by side with his gun, and there's actually a crazy triple entendre on the song When Sparks Fly, where he raps, I don't want to use protection with you, but the glove will keep you safe if you ever get loose, so the first meaning of that is, when you have, you know, you have sex, you know, a condom will protect you from pregnancy. Second meaning is when using a gun, 
a glove will keep you safe from like, you know, getting your fingerprints, you know, traced. And the third meaning being um, an OJ Simpson reference because that fl- that famous glove was used at a trial and then the juice is loose was a phrase that was used when OJ was on the Fine. run. I, I noticed so, that. Yeah, I was picking that up. That was, the that, that was cool. That was in the genius annotations. Th- that was really, really, really cool. I also, I love the way that he was able to display his anxiety and paranoia throughout the album. So first two tracks off the album, anxiety, uh, you know, the, the beach. Because I'm afraid to catch a case. I feel like everybody's snitching. Cold sweats and the shivers. I be having premonitions. And then on A, um, before I leave the house, I got to tell her that I love her. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to make it home. And I like that from Vince because he's always, you know, displayed, let's say, you know, the the consequences that come with coming with with that lifestyle. But now it's getting deep to the point where he's going into his mental and his state and he's kind of displaying that. Another um, piece of writing I really liked was on Slide. Uh, made him proud, but I never made a million. I'm talking net. I heart, I heart the set. I'm trying to raise the children. So you could see what type of phase Vince is in his life as well. And I like that type of reflective writing. So Yeah, and especially I liked it. going from self-titled to Ramona Park, I love the fact that he really built upon the subject matter that he was constructing on Very- self-titled because now you start to see that he's kind of filling in the blanks a bit more and he's kind of coloring in the drawings that he sketched out on that self-titled project and just giving you a better idea of that lingering trauma that he's had from his life in the Ramona Park neighborhood and at the end of the day like he says how you know yes I have a life of fame and money but what I really want is to have my friends back and how he's like not had the time to process all that grief so what you could expect from the content matter is Vince getting super reflective and giving you maybe the most detailed I would say showcase of what his life was like growing up at Ramona Park and yeah you're gonna see all those consequences but more on his mental like it's really 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 meditative as an approach as well so overall I think the content was amazing you know it was great writing and again no filler you know same thing for the artist performance like everything was super tight knit let's get on to the features because we don't have a big feature list here we only have two we have Ty Dolla Sign and Lil Baby are you happy about that or not really yes because these are artists that you know I never really seen you know work with Vince all that much and I wanted to see how their chemistry would put you know be fused together and you know two features is really good because I you know especially on an introspective album like this you don't want too many features because it may be overshadow certain things you want more room for Vince to come through and provide writing and provide let's say introspection so who do you think had the best feature on the album and what did you take out of the chemistry with Vince and these two different features I mean I love what Ty Dolla Sign did kind of was on a bridge and also took care of the outro on a lemonade I mean anytime that he fucking harmonizes bro it's beautiful to listen to so I knew what to expect with Ty Dolla Sign, and he delivered. And Lil Baby really surprised me. I knew that they were going to have chemistry, but I didn't think that th- that Lil Baby was going to echo the same sentiments that Vince had in the song. And that's what he does, just talking about how his environment shaped him. And um, it was just, it was heartfelt from Lil Baby. It was kind of super emotional. I feel like his rhyme pattern was more meditative as well. So I thought it played into the album perfectly. And like you said... Um, it was cool that he only used two features on this because this that's was facts. an album that's all about Vince and his life. And that's very true. I like the way that Lil Baby was able to come through here and it didn't deliver a generic verse because, you know, you're going to get generic Baby on a lot of different features because he's doing so many of them. But this was different because he's actually playing into the song and he's playing a role that Vince is similarly playing into. And as you said, the Ty, Tal- the Ty Dolla Sign um, vocals were fantastic yeah. as well. So I think the feature list was great. You know, it wasn't overbearing. It wasn't flooded. Um, um, they did a great job throughout the whole track list and they added, you know, a nice little hint of flavor when you needed it because if they weren't there, then maybe the track list would have gotten a bit redundant to a certain extent. But let's go on to the production, all right? Because this is another major switch for Vince because this is a lot more atmospheric. This is a lot more um, West Coast flavored, I would say. You know, the elements of G-Funk and like even bass sounds throughout the throughout the, uh, throughout the the production were really prominent. So how did you like this soundscape and where do you think the strengths lie with Within the production yeah, as a whole. I just love how Vince really transports your mind into a whole nother place. And I literally felt like I was on a beach in California somewhere listening to this album, especially because on some tracks you get sound effects, which add a cinematic value that make you feel like, like, for example, there's certain sounds where you hear an audience cheering, which makes it feel like Vince is performing this live to you. Also, you get um, on, on one song, I can't remember which one, um, you get like just just this array of gunshots, which makes you feel like you're in a war zone at Ramona Park. So that was cool too. But in terms of the actual production, 
a lot of bounce to it, a lot of G-Funk sounds, and a lot of vocal samples as well. I love that he used the same sample that Ice Cube used for um, You Know How We Do It. That was fucking dope. That was awesome. Even the sample used for Paper Cuts was fantastic. I'm not sure if you picked up yeah, on that, especially that how it was chopped up for the beginning of the song. Um, also, you're gonna you're, you're also going to get great sequencing. I'm not sure if you caught on to this, but the transition from the beach to A was fantastic as well. I love how that was almost felt like one big track. As I wanted more of that, though, because I feel yeah. like that was the only time you got like a perfect track transition from like track one to mm -hmm. track two it would have been cool to get more but what's really awesome that i you know picked up on is that if you start off with the beach and then you listen to the outro track which is called um what is that outro track called? I, i'm gonna pull I'm up gonna the pull track because yeah, yeah i got you it is called the blues the blues right um the blues ends off with sound effects of birds chirping and waves crashing and the beach starts off with those same sounds so the album actually makes for a perfect loop which is pretty cool I to see. I actually never no noticed that. That's pretty cool yes. as well. I also picked up on another Easter egg, thanks to Genius. Um, DJ Quick, um, it interpolates um, and samples the 1994 Diz song record Dollars Plus Cents by DJ Quick. And you already hear like how crazy that production is. I think that was the first song on the whole soundscape that really encaptivated mm. me where I was like, well, <laughs> what the fuck am I listening to in my headphones? And I think that's the sentiment for the whole production. It's like, it's much different than what Vince has ever tackled. And I like that too, because it brings flavor to his discography now. You know, you've gotten a, an array of different sounds. You've gotten EDM, you've gotten, let's say, drill, not drill type beats, but like really in your face and brash sort of productions um, throughout his discography. But this was different. You know, this was more... Calm, not calm, but like it had it, that West Coast flavor, bro. You had those you had those funky bass lines. You had that upbeat bounce. You had on a song like Magic, you had fucking Mustard who killed it. By the way, on both the beats he did, he brought in some horns, piano riffs towards the the closer on Magic. That was fucking dope. So overall, it's really a soundscape that I think will transport you to Long Beach and. Yeah, I just felt like, you know, I could be fucking, you know, strolling through the streets on a summer day, bumping this album, and it'd be the perfect soundscape to that. So That's facts. I think the production, for me, was amazing. It was an amazing the same soundscape. Way? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, even looking at it, the production is versatile because you're going to be able to play this album in different um, settings and different sort of moods. And talking about different settings and different types of moods, let's get into the replay value of this, all right? Because there's a lot to go through, especially when you're looking at, you know, Vince released a project last year, and now he comes back back with another one right away you know wasted no time um wanted to drop another one longer in length so where do you think this album strives in replay value and give me your top three songs off the album i mean mm. i want to know what you're keeping for your playlist yeah, um i definitely would say that in terms of my replay value it's going to be heavy on my rotation especially like since spring is coming summer is around the corner i just love when you know you get a g-funk sounding album in the 2020s decade because it's rare that an artist really dedicates a whole soundscape to um, you know, to West Coast instrumentals the way that Vince did here. So that's really going to be nice to listen to. And apart from that, I mean, Vince just gave me so many gems and gave me arguably maybe his most personal body of work. And that's going to be cool to go back to. And also, um, you know, compared to, let's say, the legend of Ramona Park, part one and two from Summertime 06, or um, Ramona Park is Yankee Stadium off of the Big Fish Theory. Like, it's going to be cool to make those links because he's always given you little, you know, tidbits of what it was like growing up in Ramona Park, but now he's giving you kind of the complete story. It feels kind of um, like an epilogue, like the ending of the story That's of his upbringing. So for that, it's going to make me want to go back to his old catalog and revisit this one in context. But what about you? What are your top three songs before okay. I give you mine? Uh, top three songs, I'll go uh, No Particular Order, DJ Quick, I'll go Mama's Boy, and then after that, I will do When Sparks Fly. I think those are my those are my three. How about you? What do you got in your top three right now? Top um, three? No Particular Order. Yeah, yeah I would go When Sparks Fly, Paper Cuts, mm. and... What are you saying? Last mm, one. Last one. What are you saying? Probably A. Yeah, you I go really with A. fuck with A. That, that was a My great way hook. to start off the track list. And I think what's so cool about the replay value of this is that I'm going to have this in rotation for the whole summer like I did with the self-titled. And I also think that... Um, this was an upgrade for for Vince in the way that he was able to not only attack his artistry, but the way that he was able to keep you um, also engaged throughout the whole track list. I mean, pacing's really nice on it. Um, there's not a skip on me on for the album. No. And this is also an album listen. Like, you could start from the beach, go all the way to the blues, and 
it feels coherent. It feels really nice. Like, this is an album I'm going to be able to play on a road trip. So I think it's an amazing replay value. You know, I'm going to go back. I'm going to enjoy it. And it's definitely going to be a standout for me this year. But let's go into the overall thoughts, all right? So I'll end off like this. I want to say that Vince Staples definitely upgraded this year. I feel as if he took risks within his artistry that were much needed. And I loved how he was able to build upon what he settled um, within 2021 with self-titled. And I also think that... Um, when you think that Vince can't get any more introspective and can't, you know, deliver any more, let's say, personal anecdotes, he does that times 10 because he comes through with this whole different perspective that I've never seen from him. Plus, I love how he kind of opens up his mind for you and lets you understand different types of anxieties and different types of things that he has going on. I also like that he had most of the runtime on the album. The features weren't overbearing. Soundscape, but listen, I'm a big fan of G-Funk and I love West Coast sound, so this is going to play into that top percentile for me in that lane for 2022 and as i said within the replay value um, i'm gonna have this on all summer so i think it is an amazing album but how about you lou what are you saying about this? i fucking loved it bro and it's just crazy to see that you know it's almost been 10 years that vince staples is dropping amazing album after amazing album and yet he doesn't get all the credit bro like he's literally one of the best rappers in the game and he's got to be thrown into more of those conversations and with ramona park broke my heart he makes an argument for putting out maybe his best body of work it's arguable we'll need way more time to see if it ends up reaching the likes of big fish theory and his self-titled and fm and pretty much his whole fucking catalog. <laughs> and Summertime 06. Yeah, yeah there's a lot um, of stuff. But I just love the fact that he was an open book here and really gave you these vivid observations of what he's gone through, what he's seen, how um, you know his lifestyle in the streets really affected him and his mental. Um, apart from that, it just felt like Vince was kind of in this maze trying to avoid these social traps. And also the whole idea that like Ramona Park is a character that had this dangerous magnet magnetic pull on him that kept trying to bring him back into the lifestyle, even though I like that. he kind of broke out of, you know, Ramona Park and became a successful artist. He still has ties to his neighborhood. I love the way he expressed all of that. So that was really dope. I think the production was amazing. Like you said, soundscape was super cinematic, all the sound effects, all of the cohesion West coast, um, components to the track list were really dope and again you know Vince just leveled up as a rapper as a visionary as an artist and I think that this might end up being his best body of work maybe we'll have to see maybe guys but definitely an amazing rating from me but let us know how you guys feel about the album in the comment section and we're doing reviews like this on a weekly basis so hit that subscribe button if you have not already thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one